Hello and welcome to this special showcase of Food on Prescription, a programme from the College of Medicine and ITN Productions. I'm Natasha Kaplinski. The nation's relationship with food is one of the biggest issues facing health professionals. Persuading people to educate themselves about food and eat healthily is central to the College of Medicine's drive for food to be regarded as medicine to help us avoid preventable diseases. We know that uh, what we eat is the most important determinant of whether we fall ill or not. Um, we know that 75% of heart disease, for instance, is preventable, 25% of cancer. Uh, and by the same uh, reason, uh, a lot of the increase in cancer and heart disease we're seeing is due to our poorer diet. With the college's social prescription approach that encourages community-based solutions to health or social problems, one charity is providing food for thought. Food Cycles volunteers serve surplus healthy food to at least 1,400 people a week who might otherwise make poor choices or not eat at all. I live on my own. And my wife died about five years ago. So just to get me out of the house. The food is very good. They turn it into a really delightful, warm, welcoming three-course meal for people who might be hungry or possibly lonely. 82% of them will say they eat more fruit than veg as a result of coming. Improving their diet means Food Cycles customers will be less likely to develop preventable diseases like type 2 diabetes. Steve Markham now has his diabetes under control after losing two and a half stone and learning how to eat healthily. To kickstart his weight loss, he turned to a very low calorie diet with the help of Exante, a meal replacement plan that focuses on nutrition as well as calories. Before I put something in my mouth, it's should I be eating this? When you're faced with the prospect of do I have my diabetes back and it controls me rather than me control it, or do I eat healthily? It's a bit of a no-brainer. The whole premise of becoming healthy isn't just about your body changing, it's about your mindset changing. It's about really understanding and educating yourself around what makes you eat and overeat. Steve's problem was that he didn't know what to eat and what to avoid. We're, you know, assailed by a headline one day saying eat five tomatoes a day and the next day a headline saying tomatoes will kill you in five years and and it becomes really confusing uh, and that's why the College of Medicine feels that we really do now need some really clear messages of what really is good eating. The growth in veganism in the UK suggests people see it not only as a good way to eat but also a healthier way to live. We do know there's less heart disease in people who tend to have a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle, but also maybe low instances of things like type 2 diabetes. And the idea that a vegan diet is boring or restrictive has been dispelled by the vast range of products now available in the UK. I find myself repeatedly being drawn to the vegan aisle in supermarkets, and I don't know why that is, but I'm like, oh, that looks tasty, and then I realise it's vegan. Vegans often have to take supplements to make up for nutrients found in meat and dairy foods, and the supplements themselves must be vegan. Blue-green algae is often referred to as a superfood, providing a variety of vitamins and minerals. The more natural the product, the more nutrition it retains. Through the entire process, there's no chemicals, there's no fillers, no preservatives, no additives. It's clean, it's pristine, it's organic, it's vegan. Aquasource harvests its algae from Klamath Lake in Oregon, combining its nutrient-rich sediment with nearby spring water to make their product uniquely beneficial. We've been recommending algae to clients for many years now, uh, simply because it's one of the best vitamin mineral supplements on the market that we found. I think the main benefit of taking the algae is simply good health. The reason why the awareness of algae has increased over the last 25 years is that people are more interested in consuming superfoods, organic foods and natural foods. The Braggs have long been advocates of the food as medicine approach. The family started Bragg Life Food Products in 1912. The most important thing you have in life is your body. Paul Bragg discovered the benefits of apple cider vinegar after recovering from a serious illness in his teens, then included it in a line of health products. Scientists at the company believe there is strong evidence that its active component, acetic acid, can help control blood sugar. 
it decreases insulin resistance. And that's a very big deal. If a person has insulin resistance and the glucose isn't fueling the cells, then that person's always going to feel hungry and continue to eat. As well as the acetic acid, fermentation also produces what's called the mother, a network of enzymes, bacteria and fiber for good digestive health. It works as a uh, probiotic in our gut, as well as a prebiotic, giving the microbes in our intestinal tract food to eat. Poor gut health has been linked with some metabolic conditions such as type 2 diabetes and obesity. We're all getting more interested in the health of our guts. We also know that the biome again is a big factor in obesity. We know that our, uh, the bugs in our biome determine almost how fat we are. Research at University College London shows that the microbiome needs good bacteria in the gut. Here again, quality supplements are key. Water-based Simprove was the only product in their study to provide adequate support for the gut. One 70 milliliter dose delivers billions of multi-strain live and active bacteria, which produce short chain fatty acids within the gut to help replenish good bacteria. Rebecca Newman has been taking it for five years. When I started reading the trials around Simprove, I was really impressed. And as soon as I tried it, from I'd say about week three, I really saw a change. It's really hard to describe precisely, but I just felt better. I'd wake up feeling really well. Over at the University of Reading, they have a modelling facility that enables researchers to look at all the ways our gut regulates our health. The Department of Food and Nutritional Sciences here is the largest in the UK. The university's status as a leading partner in the European Institute of Innovation and Technology's food programme means their work attracts attention from those who can effect change. What's great about the research we do here is we do so much research on gut health and that's attracted the um, interest of parliamentarians and we actually are in a great position where we sit on the only all-party parliamentary group on the human gut microbiota where we discuss with parliamentarians, MPs and peers things that affect the gut bacteria and how that can impact on health. What we eat matters hugely for our health, but perhaps what and how much we drink has an even greater impact. Our bodies are made up of about 60% water, but there's often confusion about how much to take in. Um, a litre a day? I think that's still a lot. Isn't the re recommended amount two litres? I normally don't really pay attention too much to that. I drink when I'm thirsty. In terms of water intake, we should all take a bit more water. It's about common sense, really. Are you thirsty? If you're thirsty, then you're probably 20 or 30% dehydrated and you probably need to take more fluid. A lot of people do choose sweetened beverages and if they could just swap at least one of those a day for a water, drink, whether it's a bottle or a glass of water, that can make substantial change to their total intake of nutrients and calories at the end of the day. So I think it's down to all of us to think about hydration and to set the right example to ourselves. Some people are getting the message about drinking more water and consumers increasingly want to do so sustainably. Natural source waters ensure their water is as pure as possible and the packaging is fully recyclable. Natural source waters are waters that come from protected underground sources. They're not treated with any chemicals to make them safe to drink. They're as pure as nature intended. They flow through layers of rock to make an underground aquifer and our members then pump them up to the surface or they naturally come to the surface. They're packaged and then sent off for consumers to, to buy them in shops. Bottle, cap and label can all be recycled and reused so more people can benefit from what is effectively the best and most widely available medicine of all, water. Thank you for joining me for the special showcase version of Food on Prescription, a programme from the College of Medicine and ITN Productions. All the reports are available in full on the College of Medicine's website. The details are on the screen now. From me and the team here, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>